This presentation looks at the volatility of the halogens. By the end of the presentation, you ought to know what's meant by volatility. And you ought to be able to explain the differing volatility of the halogens as you move up and down group 7 um, based on uh, trends in intermolecular bonding. Let's look at this word volatility then. It's a, it's a word that's used in everyday English, um, but not in a way that meshes very well with its chemistry meaning. If you were to say a substance was volatile, uh, the average person might think that you mean that it's very reactive or even explosive, but that's actually not uh, what we mean in chemistry by volatility. So what do we mean? Uh, simply the tendency of a substance to turn into a gas, so how readily it evaporates. If you think about water, it's not the most volatile of liquids. It takes a while to evaporate. Certainly something like petrol, uh, more volatile, evaporates more readily than water. And we can link volatility to boiling point. So if you have a liquid with a low boiling point, boils at a relatively low temperature, uh, logically, hopefully from what we've said, that should sort of give you a sense of its volatility and uh, it being highly volatile. It evaporates readily. Conversely then, something with a high boiling point uh, logically has a low volatility. It doesn't evaporate so readily. So what about the halogens then? How does their volatility compare as you go down the group? Remember that the halogens as elements are a molecular substance. And so in order to think about their physical properties, we'll think about the intermolecular bonding between them. Uh, so let's, let's work through that together. Um, first of all, halogen molecules, Cl2, Br2, that kind of thing, um, are they going to be polar molecules? Pause the video and have a think for a moment. Hopefully you decided that they'll be non-polar. You've got two identical atoms attached to each other, uh, so there can't be any difference in electronegativity, and the electrons in the covalent bond between two atoms will be equally shared. What about the type of intermolecular bonds, then, that you'll get between halogen molecules? Again, pause the video, have a little think. What sort of intermolecular bonds will you see between halogen molecules? Hopefully you came to the conclusion there'd be instantaneous dipole, induced dipole intermolecular bonds. That's, that's our only option uh, if we have non-polar molecules. Uh, so we've got this problem in a way that, that all the halogens are going to have the same type of, in, of intermolecular bond between the molecules. So we're going to have to look somehow of a trend within that intermolecular bond. And you should have already looked at this by now. What, what can make instantaneous dipole, induced dipole intermolecular bond stronger or weaker uh, for different substances? So again, pause the video and see for chlorine and iodine if you can figure out what the uh, factor is here uh, that will make difference in the strength of the intermolecular bonds and how you might explain that. So the key idea here is the atom size or, or mass. Uh, chlorine Cl2 has lighter atoms in the molecule, iodine has heavier atoms. Uh, so what? Well, it's electrons that's the so what here. The lighter atoms have less electrons and the heavier atoms have more electrons. Again, so what? Well, uh, this then relates to the size of the dipoles they form. Chlorine with its fewer electrons, um, as they move around randomly, you'll get smaller instantaneous dipoles forming, so smaller induced dipoles, um, and iodine the opposite. With more electrons, we can get these bigger or stronger uh, instantaneous and induced dipoles forming. Well, so what? Again, uh, and we need to relate this to energy. With the, with the smaller dipoles in the chlorine molecules, uh, you'll get less attraction between the molecules, a weaker attraction, and so it'll take less energy to break the intermolecular bonds. The opposite story is true for the iodine. With the larger dipoles, it'll take more energy to break the intermolecular bonds between the iodine molecules. So this means that the chlorine will be more volatile and the iodine will be less volatile. You can see then, looking at this uh, image for the halogens, as you move down the group, uh, we start with fluorine with very low melting point in orange uh, and boiling point in blue, well below zero degrees C. Uh, and then moving down the group, we end up uh, moving well above zero degrees C to relatively high melting and boiling points. We've said that uh, the volatility of the halogens decreases 
as you go down the group because you've got increasingly strong instantaneous dipole, induced dipole, intermolecular bonds between the molecules. Uh, so chlorine is a gas at room temperature. Uh, we've already said that. It's a green gas at room temperature. Bromine, when we talked about its state at room temperature before, we said it was a liquid. Um, but actually, it's still relatively volatile. Uh, these intermolecular bonds are still the sort of weaker instantaneous dipole, induced dipole intermolecular bonds. So bromine uh, will always have a cloud of vapor um, above the liquid, and it's a, an orange vapor that you can see quite distinctly. Even iodine, which is a solid at room temperature, if you warm it, uh, will go straight from the solid to a gas. That's called subliming. Um, and the gas, rather attractively, has a decided purple color. So the volatility of the halogens decreases down the group, uh, but they are all relatively volatile compared to many other substances. So here, here's a question for you to check that you have got to grips with the ideas here. Predict and explain the state of astatine at room temperature. Well, hopefully you decided that it would be a solid since the volatility of the halogens is decreasing down the group. Iodine is a solid, so astatine would expect to be even less volatile than iodine, so also a solid. And you can explain that in terms of the mass of the astatine atoms and therefore the amount of electrons, the size of the instantaneous and induced dipoles, the strength of attraction, hence the amount of energy needed to break the intermolecular bonds between the molecules.